Hey, creeps, how's it going? Welcome back to Library Macabre, and today we are going out of the library once again and hitting up some bookstores. I've been so excited for this weekend. I have been so excited for Saturday, and it's finally here, and to celebrate, I'm just gonna go out and bookshop. Haven't really been bookshopping in a while. I think the last time I went book shopping was in the uh, the last book shopping vlog that I did. I've been buying a lot of stuff online mostly, but I've been having so much luck buying stuff online that I thought I should ride this wave of luck out and actually go out to these bookstores that I haven't been to in a while, and I'm hoping that they have stocked up with some new books. So first off, we're going to go to Troy, Ohio to Aroundabout Books, which is one of my favorite stores. It's actually a recent discovery of mine that I found from a Facebook post like two years ago. Since then, it's become one of my faves. So they have a, an entire room full of like vintage horror paperbacks. It's really amazing. After that, I'm going to go up to Tip City, Ohio, which is pretty close to Troy and hit up, uh, what, what's it called again? Browse a while books. Another one of my favorite stores that I've been going to since I was just a little tiny Cameron and they actually uh, have lots of uh, really great horror paperbacks there as well and ghosts because Browse a Wild Books is very haunted. <laughs> I've actually had some kind of weird things happen when I've been there before so I'm really excited to go back and see if they have replenished their stock. Oh this arm is getting tired so I hope you guys will join me. I will be vlogging about it the whole entire time and without further ado let's go. This is the reason why I always look in the mystery section for horror books, because you never know if something has been misplaced or if a customer picked this up and then put it down in the mystery section instead of putting it back where it's supposed to go. This is Killer, a very, very rare book that I've been looking for for a long time.
mystery section, this Cape Fear, which is arguably a mystery. And then I also often find these uh, zebra and pinnacle suspense thrillers, which can often pass as horror. So found a couple of those. Also, I saw that Richard Lehman was put in the mystery section, even though he writes, you know, extreme horror. So definitely look in the mystery section if you're hunting for horror, because you never know where it's gonna pop up. All right, just got out of a roundabout books and let's take a look here at this box full of horror. I ended up buying almost $150 worth of books. It happens almost every time I go in there, honestly. And I told myself when I went shopping today, I'm like, you know what? Don't make yourself feel guilty. You have a job, you have money, you aren't poor, you can afford it, it's gonna be okay. You just buy what you want, treat yourself a little bit and don't, don't feel guilty about it. I can't help it, man. I just, every single time I spend money on anything, I always feel very, very guilty, especially if it's a large, chunk of money but I'm trying to remind myself I'm not broke I can afford it it's okay it's not gonna break the bank and I got some really really good stuff like really good stuff but there's still one more bookstore to go to and that is uh browse a wild books in tip city Ohio the haunted bookstore and we'll see what we can find and who knows uh, the horror section is in the basement which is supposed to be super super haunted so maybe something creepy will happen I've definitely had weird feelings down there before so to wait and see. All right, let's go. So I am here in Tip City, home of Browse and Wild Books. Now Tip City is a beautiful, beautiful town. My dad actually grew up here and a lot of my family comes from Tip City. So it's really, really cool getting to come here and see like my dad's old stomping grounds. I really, really love this town. It's just beautiful. And right now it's decorated for Christmas already, but it's really pretty. The town is just very quaint. The houses are very historic. I don't know, there's just something very wholesome about it, so. I just wanted to share that with you. But right now, I'm gonna head over to the bookstore. It's right around the corner here. I'm gonna walk over. So these are all of the horror paperbacks that I was telling you guys about. They keep them down here in this creepy ass basement, which really adds to the horror aesthetic, I gotta say. And we'll take a look here. Some of the prices are a bit higher now on these because, you know, these books have gotten to be a lot more collectible, but I can usually find some pretty good deals in here. So let's see what we can find. finding a whole lot that wasn't here the last time I was here. I was here, I don't know, four or five months ago. It might have been longer than that, honestly, but uh, I'm not finding a whole lot that I didn't find before, but I did find this upstairs, which is a book club edition of Resolved Your Dead from the Horror High series. But I'm gonna look around this basement a little bit more and see if anything is hiding from me. That always scares the shit out of me, I gotta say. I actually found quite a lot in here the last time I was here. This 
kind of creeps me out, so I uh, don't usually come back here. <laughs> but uh, last time I was down here for a few minutes and I found some pretty good stuff. So I'm gonna try to stay back here as long as I can. See what I can find. But every hair on my body is currently <laughs> standing on end being back here. <laughs> Here we have a Beverly Hastings. It's not in the best condition, but that's an author I've been wanting to check out lately. Couldn't stay down there any longer. Okay, I wound up only getting this one here, which honestly, this alone was worth the trip over here. So everything else in the store, um, you know, I already have so many horror paperbacks and most of the books that they had, I already owned, so I didn't really need to buy anything. Uh, but if you are a horror paperback collector and you want to shop somewhere and you're ever in Ohio or you're ever near Tip City, Ohio, come to this bookstore because they are awesome. They have a ton of books. I will say, though, make sure you have some money on you because they know that these books are collectible. They are well aware and they have price them up a little bit. So just be aware of that. You're not gonna find them for a dollar or two each. You're gonna actually spend a little more money. But all of their books seem to be in really nice condition. So they're very collectible copies. You would spend more on eBay. As for that basement, man, it was it was especially creepy today. I've been able to stay down there and look at books for, you know, like a half hour and not really feel too weird. Sometimes it's a little bit different. Today was one of those days. Uh, <laughs> I, I could not stay down there. I just felt very, very creeped out, especially when I went back to that one room with the uh, the weird freezer storage closet thing and that skeleton prop that they put back there. It just, it creeps me out. <laughs> it gets to me. I can't stay back there for too long. And I felt like something was just like hanging on my back the whole time. So I left. <laughs> I ran. <laughs> Keep that in mind too, um, because there's been a lot of experiences at the store. People have been scratched before and like punched and hit on. And not hit on as in like, the ghosts are not gonna flirt with you, okay? They're gonna actually physically abuse you. So it was, it was, it was mighty creepy today. <laughs> but I found what I needed and I, I left. And now I'm very, very hungry and I wanna go get some food and I wanna go home and look at these books that I got. So I'm gonna show you when I get home what books I got and uh, then I need to get on some writing and I need to do some stuff. I need to be productive today. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye. All right, so I just got home, got my giant box of books here. It's very, very heavy. I actually also came home to a couple of packages, which I'm actually going to unbox those over on my Patreon for my patrons. But that was exciting. I got another box of books. So <laughs> lots and lots of books today. I'm sitting here in front of my window on the floor. I still have a pumpkin here, <laughs> just chilling out in front of my window. So I'm gonna chill out right here we're gonna look at what books that I got. I got that one from Browse Wild Books, which I'm very, very excited to get, but you guys have already seen that one. The rest of these are all from Roundabout Books. So this first one here is not in the best condition, but I had to get it because I've been wanting a copy of this for a while. And that is Behind the Door. This is by Frank Lambert. And it's got that amazing step back cover art. So, so cool, man. I freaking love it. So we got that. This is from Popular, Popular Library, and it was printed in 1988. It's the first printing. And I don't, I don't know what this is about. I just, I love the cover and eventually I will read it. This one is by Paul Thoreau and it is called The Black House. And this is published by, geez, I don't even know who this publisher is. Washington Square Press. Oh, it's an imprint of Pocket Books. Next up, we have a newer leisure title. This one's by Deborah LeBlanc, and it is called Morbid Curiosity. It's in very nice condition. This one is from 2007, so not very vintage, but, you know, leisure books is uh, now defunct. All of these are, well, for the most part, most of these titles are out of print. So I've been trying to pick these up whenever I can find them for cheap. I, it used to be, I was never interested in these, but more and more, I'm, I've been more curious to pick these up. Next, we have The Best of Masks. This is edited by J.N. Williamson. Funny, I own several, several books by J.N. Williamson, like 
30 to 40 of his books and I have not read any of them. So this is another one to add to my growing uh, shelf of Jane Williamson's books that I have never read. Uh, but eventually, I just, I don't know where to start. I have no idea where to start. Uh, but this is in really nice shape. It's got a great cover. That is just really kind of gross and disturbing. Uh, of course, I love it. Uh, next up, we have some Grand Masterton. So this is another newer book. It's published by Leisure. This one's Manitou Blood. I've never read the Manitou. And everybody recommends it to me and says it is really crazy and bonkers and fun. And eventually, I will get to it one day. Uh, but this one's like another book in that series and it has to do with the vampire, I guess, which is interesting. So yeah, there's that. We have another Masterton here. I have quite a bit of Graham Masterton's books in this box. So this one's called Death Mask. It's another leisure book. If anybody's read any of these, let me know what you thought because I don't really know <laughs> much about these. So we have next The Doorkeepers, another Graham Masterton from Leisure Books. I feel like I had more Masterton in here. Yes, I do. I see another one down here at the bottom. This one is called Edgewise. That's kind of a cool cover. Very spooky. Ah, here's another one by Deborah LeBlanc. And that is called Grave Intent. I do love myself a book with a graveyard on the cover. So of course I had to pick that up. Aha! More Masterton quite a bit of Masterton's books. I have a lot of his old ones, like his ones from the 70s and 80s, but I yeah, did not have like any of these leisure editions. So next up is Blind Panic. That cover is kind of scary, honestly. <laughs> and this other one is called Night Wars. It's kind of a cool looking one. The covers on these aren't bad. I just prefer the illustrated ones, you know? So that's it tends to be what I gravitate towards, but I don't know. These, they're not bad covers. They're, they're pretty good. And like, not only that, but the books do look good on a shelf together. They're very uniform looking. So I do appreciate that about them. Next, we have one by John Gideon, and that is Golden Eyes. Now I've been hearing, of course, a lot of good things about John Gideon, especially his book called Greeley's Cove. That's one that I would really like to read soon. But this is one that I had not heard about, and I really love the cover art. I love that it's all white around here, and the branches are embossed. And then we have just this little illustration right here of a house. Very, very nice condition. I was so happy to find that. I also grabbed a couple of books by Christopher Golden, who I have read a couple of his books. Uh, this one here is called Angel Souls and Devil Hearts. Got a cute little gargoyle on the cover. Hi, buddy. So cute. Uh, I have another Christopher Golden. Yes, right here. This one's called Of Saints and Shadows. This is another one that's from like the mid nineties. This one's from 1994. I believe this one's from 95. So yeah, they go pretty well together. Uh, let's look at one of the middle grade books I got. So we have The Psych Zone or Psycho Zone, I guess. I have one of the other books in this series. Uh, this is a series by David Labar. <laughs> I love that cover with this like dinosaur looking all hip, ready for school in the 90s. This one was published in 1990, 1996. I also found this really adorable book right here called Howl High. I actually saw this on Instagram, I think recently. Somebody posted about it and I knew I had to have it. So it's funny that all of a sudden this popped up. Uh, but yeah, that looks like totally up my alley. <laughs> kind of uh, gives me Autumn Crow High vibes. So I need to read that soon found this one, I believe, in the mystery section. It's actually an Avon suspense book, and that is called Web of Smoke by Aaron Grady. She's helpless, frightened, alone. His wait is over. Here's another suspense book. This is a uh, zebra. Has some spine creases, but I went ahead and grabbed this one, Night Terror. I believe this cover art is by Tim Jacobus, if I'm not mistaken. I can usually spot his artwork a mile away. He did quite a lot of these suspense books. I'm trying to find his signature and I don't see it, but I'll probably find it later on off camera. Here's another one that I've actually been looking for for a while. This one's called Night Stalker. This is by Carol Davis Luce. I think this is Tim Jacobus. Yes, I see a signature right down there. Very, very cool. White Light by Wendy Haley. Very, very nice copy of this book. The tagline says, home is where the terror is. 
uh, guys, I'm like barely scratching the surface here. I still have so many, so many other books in this box. Uh, this one I had never heard of before. It's published by Pocket Books. It's called With Friends Like These by Lisa Fosberg, I think. And that just has a very eerie cover. We have a quote by V.C. Andrews on the cover. So it looks cool. It's not in the best shape but I still have to pick it up. Here's one that I found in the mystery section and I'm so glad I found this. This is The Rivered House by F. Edwin Lamberth. This is a leisure book from the early 80s. It's in great shape. I was so happy to find this. It was really, it was really hiding. I had to dig for it a little bit, so I'm glad I could find that. Here's one that was hiding in the science fiction section and that is The Burning Man. This is a pinnacle title. It's labeled as horror, but it was hiding in the science fiction, so I'm glad I looked. I think this is the only one that I found in the science fiction section. We also have Blood of the Children. Look at that. Very pretty cover. A very nice copy. This is published by Bantam. How to pick up this one. Brian Lumley's Necroscope number four, Dead Speak. Now, I've, I've been trying to collect his books in hardcover, but I looked on the copyright page and it looks like this was never printed in hardcover. It seems to be only a paperback edition. So I went ahead and picked it up. I don't know if that's correct or not. I know a lot of his books are in hardcover, so that might not be right. But uh, I went ahead and grabbed it. I believe this is being turned into a video game, I think. There's been a lot of buzz about the Necroscope series. I've never read it because these things are chunky as hell and I, I need to cut out some time. To, to dig into this. I also hear they're very dense, so we'll see. Next up is this symbiotic fascination by Charlie Jacob. I've heard really great things about this book from Alex the Bookubus here on YouTube. She gave this really good review. This is from, did I say review? Review. This is from Leisure Books. It's in really great shape. I had to pick it up as soon as I saw it. I can't remember what exactly she said this was about. It's just, I remember her saying it's very disturbing and has to do a lot with body horror, I believe. Still have so many more in this box. Next is another pinnacle suspense book called Skin Deep by Carol Davis Luce. Love that cover art. I love the colors. And we've got a homecoming queen dead on the ground. Looks totally up my alley. And the tagline says, sometimes looks can kill. Here's another one from Zebra, Night Prey. Another one by Carol Davis Luce. So these two go together. I believe she wrote that other one too that I just showed. Aha, yes, she did. She also wrote Night Stalker. So grabbed three of her books. Next is Hex by Stephen L. Stern. And Initially, I thought this was a like a reprint of another book called Hex that was originally published by Playboy. This one is published by Pocket, so I'm guessing this is different. It's a totally different book, even though it looks a lot like the other one. This is one I've been eyeing for a while. The Children of Day or Dinmouth, I think it's Dinmouth, from Pocket. I believe this is a Lovecraftian kind of book. Could be wrong about that. Here's another one that I found in the mystery section and <laughs> snatched it right up. Never heard of it, but looks really cool. So this is Jill by Thomas St. Martin, a novel of nerve wrenching terror. And the tagline says, she stalks the night, she revels in blood. She rivals Jack the Ripper. No man is safe. Love that. I love that the letters are dripping blood. Looks so cool. I'm glad that I grabbed this. I think it was a very good decision. Next is The Band by Carmen Adams. I actually own this already, but mine is a second printing and this is a first printing. So had to grab this. This is actually a young adult um, Avon Flair book, which I've been trying to collect all of those. And it's been, it's been a little bit of a bitch trying to collect these books, I gotta say. Uh, it's a, they're very, very rare, but every once in a while I'll get lucky and find one. So there's that one. Here's another book by Christopher Golden. It's published by Signet. It's called Strange Wood. Very creepy autumnal cover right there. I don't know if this actually takes place at Halloween or not. It just kind of looks like a Halloween book. Here is another young adult book. This one is published by Laurel Leaf Mystery. It's actually considered mystery. 
Eyes. It's called The Sandman's Eyes by Patricia Windsor. I have a lot of her books. I believe she wrote some for Zebra. I'm not totally sure about that, but I know I have other books by her. That just has a very creepy cover right there. And it won the Edgar Award. Here's another Grandmaster tin. This one's called The Fifth Witch. Another one of those leisure paperbacks. This one is a an older leisure book. Found this in the mystery section. I believe it's horror. It doesn't say horror on it, but I mean, it looks like a horror book to me. And it's about Rasputin. So here we have Rasputin's Revenge. It's in very nice shape. I've never heard of this. I've never heard anybody talk about it. Never seen anybody post about it. So if you're one of those um, obscure horror readers, let me know if you've read this. I doubt anybody has though. <laughs> Picked up a Richard Lehman. Uh, this is the Night in, Night in the Lonesome October. I've not read this. I've heard a lot of people recommend this one to me, so I need to get to this. Dying Breath by John A. Hab, 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 no. I was trying to read it on the screen. It's totally did not come out right. Hallard, not Habbard. And that has a really sweet cover. Totally embossed, of course. Here we have a couple books by Melanie Tem. So these are both, both leisure books. We have Deceiver and Slain in the Spirit. Here are a couple of very, very old Signet books by Chelsea Quinn Yarbo, or Yarbro. This one is Path of the Eclipse and Blood Games, both vampire books. I think these are part of a series. Here we have another later leisure book from T.M. Wright, The House on Orchid Street. This was probably the find of the entire day. <laughs> this really made me happy. Found this in the mystery section, and that is Killer, one that I have wanted for years and years. I love that cover art. I've been looking for this, and I'm so happy I found it. So thank God that I went to the mystery section. I have a couple more young adult books. So I picked up a couple by Joan Lowry Nixon, who's an author that I have been wanting to read a little bit more of. The Stalker is one that I've been looking for for a while because I love that cover. That is just such a great cover. And then I also found The Island of Dangerous Dreams. I also found a Christopher Pike that I was missing. So this is actually his like science fiction fantasy book. It's called The Tachyon Web, I think. Uh, I'll still put this in with the horror books by him just because I he hasn't written very many fantasy or science fiction. I'm just gonna put them all in the horror section. So yeah, there's that. This one's actually pretty rare. I've seen this go for quite a bit on eBay. So happy to find that. And it looks like we are down to the last four books. This next one is an Avon book. It's actually a mystery book, but I had to grab it. I mean, I love mystery books, but lately I just, I tend to buy exclusively horror. This one looks a little bit more like a slasher though. So we have Stalker's Moon. And the tagline on this is where Orion walks, death follows. And I read the back here and yeah, it seems like it's pretty brutal. Orion has risen and is on the prowl, stalking the innocent, gorging on blood and fear. So yeah, it definitely does have some, some slasher vibes. So had to grab that. And then we have Insatiable by David Vorkin. I couldn't remember if I had this one, but I don't think I do. So it's a... Uh, one of those cheesy looking vampire books, which I'm I'm all for. So yeah, there's that one. And we've got just two more. Here's another young adult book. This one is called Swept Away. I don't know how to pronounce the author's name right here. So I'm not gonna try. This is published by Harper Teen. Alone Against the Elements. Alone Against a Killer. So it looks like they are, you know, facing nature, but also on the run from a killer out in the wilderness. So looks cool. And the last book is one that I believe I actually own a hardcover of, but I love this paperback cover. This is so, so cool. And that is The Empire of Fear by Brian Stableford. A vampire novel. I believe it's a lot like the Necroscope series by Brian Lumley. That cover just totally rocks, man. That's so good. Looks like I've been talking for 25 minutes. So uh, that's it. Those are all the books. I hope you enjoyed this, this uh, book shopping adventure slash haul. And I hope you come back for more. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode of Library Macabre. Later creeps.